Yeah, hi. Welcome back to our podcast. We are on the fifth episode of Founders for Power. Uh, thanks a lot, Ashutosh, uh, for coming on. Um, great to have you back. I you said that I taught you one session online. We are looking at this online medium right now. So Ashutosh is. Um, young serial entrepreneur is on to his second venture right now he is making sustainable uh, printer paper and one of the customers right now is iamb so we'll probably listen to his story in terms of how did he get into this how he has uh, started nurtured and gaining traction over the last few years so welcome asutosh uh, why don't you tell us a bit about your journey entrepreneurial journey before maybe yeah. right from your bba days as well absolutely thank you so much sir for having me here i think it's uh, always great to be part of the campus that you know you got some knowledge out of and uh, it's really exciting and definitely an honor <laughs> so bba yeah that was actually the most exciting time i think for any business student when they are uh, and that we be more than theory or looking at their cias or assignments they start thinking of b plans right yeah. i think i myself would have come up with almost 20 30 business plans whatever it may be if it was feasible or not but just for the sake of brainstorming you know we would do that a lot and um, it was uh, actually even my co-founder is from the same class but uh, yeah i'll get on to that later and bba is when i started my first venture i was in my third year and uh, my cousin approached and said let's start a business where his mother used to make uh, these instant foods for him to carry when he travels to japan and korea he used to travel a lot to the far east and being a vegetarian was so tough for him so his mom made some instant foods and all his colleagues started asking for it so okay. <laughs> when uh, one day in a function he said you know what let's uh, let's start this as a business there is definitely a need and uh, you know there's probably a few key players mtr and mayas i think there's room for more that was the idea so we started a company called express feast uh, right from when i was in college and uh, the idea was you add just water and you have preservative free homemade meals anywhere on the go right and uh, this was a flash dried or uh... yeah not freeze dried but this was more of uh, roasted uh, you remember the moisture by roasting that's it okay. we didn't do any freeze drying process it was just add hot water or add water and cook so it's very slow yeah. process of heating. not so it is fast few is to get done by 8 minutes few takes oh, about okay. 10 20 minutes so if even these are natural home uh, methods actually okay. if you see you can make dry poha at home mm. just add hot water you have <laughs> poha that's edible so it's something that was there from Uh, before and uh, that was my first venture along with my cousins uh, it did well we got onto few good uh, companies like indigo flights and we were serving our may have eaten yeah sabudana if it was on the menu i would have yeah, certainly yeah. asked for it would have definitely been there in fact when i used to travel i used to see people next to me or in front of me eat it and i'm like okay that's nice what's your feedback <laughs> it was good uh, it was a good uh, venture so it was just out of the blue your cousin saying yeah. let's start yeah and yeah. without a thought yeah. you just leaped in i just leaped in i okay. just leaped in i didn't know what else to do i wanted to do a business but i saw this to be a great uh, and they are great people actually and I, it was a good chance for me to be mentored with them so that was one of the key de- factors why i started that business with them post which uh, i came out of that company Uh, it's doing well it did well or? yes yes in fact they were on shark tank season 1 also <laughs> okay yeah it's doing well it's it has its own audience it's doing quite well then i came out of that and uh, i was uh, in the ylp program in imb had a lot of insights there and during the ylp program is where all this started but uh, not necessarily into what i am doing right now so to give you a bit of the story on my current journey me and my co-founder we both from christ we know each other from childhood from school days oh, okay both of us we graduated from the same college as well and uh, we were just having coffee uh, one day 
and we wanted to just start something i had come out of this he was in his family business and he was part time working in one corporate gifting firm and he's like let's do something so you believe or not sir this we started this business this company was formed without any idea what we going to sell or serve we just said let's start a company first then we'll figure out <laughs> what we went and registered we did register we uh, we started exploring a few products and um, we had a few uh, because i was in the fmcg space some people started saying asking me for distribution of unique products right some stevia based products someone came up with an energy drink and so the idea was to take unique products and start distributing them so we named our company bun pai bun pai bun pai bun pai literally means distribute in japanese <laughs> oh okay so we just named our company bun pai and uh, we started taking a few other products and started uh, doing business with that and in this journey we found a interesting product called uh, these plantable pencil seed books so the idea was once you use your pencil you can put it in the soil and grow a plant and it had lady finger tomato cucumber all kitchen uh, uh, you know <laughs> kitchen plants and uh, we started with these products we supplied to infosys sap evi did sell them we did we did good quantities as a startup it was less than 2 3 months and we did good numbers in fact we were one of the very first to start this in bangalore but what we realized was uh, evi would not buy the same product again because it was given as a gift it was a novelty so all that effort of getting into such big corporates and then they buy it once and not again we said why can't we bring sustainability into an everyday use product right and we started observing that a4 paper printed paper was being used in abundance not just in corporates it was covid time after uh, that right and we saw hospitals using it so much and uh, that's when we said okay let's do something where you know it's an everyday use you sell it to the client once and you recur recur the, that makes a lot more sense so we did a lot of r and d we got this product introduced to the market we gave it to one client one diagnostic center for 6 months we did not go anywhere else because what if the printer gets damaged in other places so we didn't know how much this would perform So what did you do did you started making it yourself or did you buy something off the shelf and to see right. whether there's a market uh so actually so we didn't buy this off the shelf we worked with a manufacturer so a paper mill uh, who we knew uh, through a close contact we worked with him and got this product uh, made got done yeah made wow so this is a very but this is a batch product right you would have to give them a certain quantity of production correct we did take a quantity but okay. we kept it in inventory and just gave it to one client okay. we did take that risk we did but, take but did you do some experiments did you talk to some experts before you got this product uh, how did you even understand because yeah you were selling poha yeah. and <laughs> yeah. sabudana yeah. and then you were selling pencils right. which would be regenerated into plant correct and now you suddenly looking at a paper from a market point of view made sense that you sell ones and then there are yes. recurrent sales happen if it's successful yes but for each of these products the first one at least it's home grown yeah. the technology yeah. mother was already making it yeah. the uh, pencils are not yeah. really yeah. rocket science you could Got figure it. something out but this is a little bit of it's technology right a little bit is. of uh, research it is so actually i would say we're the right place at the right time the mill uh the mill owner who came up with this product with us he had actually done a lot of r&d for about 6 years to try something here and he's a pure manufacturer he didn't want to be in the marketing and put a brand and this thing he just kind of half created a product with a few variations but did you all know that earlier before you went to him uh, no we did ask him and he said okay we have this and let's like work on this together <laughs> so we did work with him together we tweaked a lot of it was it the first manufacturer you reached out to he is known to us oh he is known to yeah okay. he is known to us so it was a common uh, channel okay so we worked with him and we got this citation so what's so unique about ours even though there were other recycled papers in the market was ours was naturally white without any bleaching So if you see in other recycled papers it comes either in a brown color or a little grayish color right 
In our paper, even though it's completely recycled, it is a little off-white. It is more soothing to the eye. Uh, and this happened without bleaching. So this is where... How is it possible? So that's something that these people have done. Yes. We did it together. And it was... Okay. Mostly goes into the segregation and the use of the raw material. So, so the raw material is the kind of raw material that yeah. you're using. Yeah. Okay. It's more pristine. It's more pristine. <laughs> okay. It's... Um, it is segregated, highly segregated, and uh, we, uh, you know, recycle that, and we get this natural color without adding any chemicals to it. Oh, so this is because paper industry is also an extremely polluting industry yeah. because of the bleach, right? Yeah. yeah. And also taking off the cellulose is that absolutely it is. Deinking is very harmful. If you have to deink paper, you have to put in so many chemicals. You have to make paper white. You have to add over eighteen bleaching chemicals. And if not treated properly, it does go into our rivers and agricultural fields, kind of pollutes that uh, environment. So it is a polluting industry. That's, this is where we thought we'll have better impact of, you know, uh, giving paper that is non-bleached. Okay. Yeah. That's where... But our, this pulp is where? Where does the pulp come from? All recycled paper. So we take waste from packaging industries. So let's say uh, for packaging, you have a die cut, right? So there's a lot of excess around the edges. So we take those. We cartons, take, you mean? Cartons. Not those cartons. I mean, mono cartons. Okay. Let's say a medicine box, maybe. Right? So there'll be non-printed areas, which gets cut out. And when you make textbooks, though, again, the excess edges which are again non-printed. Oh, okay. Got so it. we Got take it. that and yeah, we take these kind of waste and we recycle. So these are all non-printed, but in tiny But wastage. Wastage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so they were earlier being pulped together with ink yeah. products. Yeah. So now you have separated them out and created a product just using these waste materials. Yes. So, okay. Which is a largest resource for you all in terms of raw material? It's packaging industry, sir. Okay, largest. And they're, they're happy that you're picking it up for them? Absolutely. That's that's one of their revenue streams. <laughs> when we buy waste out of... That's a big revenue stream for them also. Not just packaging. Second comes our publishing, where they make textbooks or notebooks and they have the edges trimmed off again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And we have a lot of corporate uh, shredded paper that we take. Uh, we do take a lot of old school notebooks, not necessarily. Well, to... How do you aggregate all of this? These are so dispersely done, right? Yep. So, so is there an aggregator that you go to or you're doing it to yourself? No, actually we do take waste, but only in bulk quantities. Uh, in our startup, we don't have the bandwidth to collect a lot of waste because we have to send it in bulk. Uh, but when we take different types of waste, they go into different purposes of recycling. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily into making only our paper. Now, for example, if we take newspapers, we can make newspaper pencils for our product. Yes. Right. And uh, we do take a few other variants where we make a little slightly lesser GSM notepads, maybe. So we kind of segregate each paper for different purposes and then we recycle it. Okay. So now that you had your product, how did you start convincing people that here is something that you need to buy? Initially, it was uh, a lot of knocking on doors and going to known people. Uh, of course, the awareness on sustainability had built. Uh, people were uh, saying, okay, if there's any other option for me to implement some sustainable alternatives. So easiest was paper. So let's say you have to do some kind of a water uh, STP or any some rainwater harvesting. It involved a lot of investments right if you want to do solar and all but now as a company everybody wants to go carbon neutral right apple has set that trend and they want to uh you know the paris climate accords they've signed few of the fortune 500s and when you look at the sdg goals again by 2030 companies individuals organizations want to adhere to more and more sdgs right so for them, this became a good switch with, as the first switch. Easy switch. Easy switch. It was in the same price point. It was a sustainable alternative and it shows some change in the organization. So I think it was far more easier for us uh, to start asking people. So even now, if uh, before when we started the business, we had to make a lot of calls and tell them we do recycle paper and, you know, approach. But now it's become so, this thing that people search for recycled paper and Rescript kind of shows up and then they approach us. <laughs> so this is Rescript. Rescript. 
That's the okay. name of the brand. So what happened to that previous venture where you said distribute? Banpai uh, is Japanese, the Banpai. Banpai is the name of the company. We oh, are Banpai still Banpai India Private Limited as a company, okay. but Rescript is the brand that we launched for uh, our stationery products. So you have been successful in all the initiatives that you have started, right? Yeah, in no way. So what would be probably let's say one of the significant capabilities as a salesman? Oh, significant capabilities. Uh, <laughs> because a lot of people refuse to yep. do things because they're much more comfortable working on the product, building Correct. features than trying to sell. Correct. Right? Correct. But the significant success of an entrepreneur depends on how your ability to go and sell, which you seem yeah. to be doing in all your ventures. I think even from the first venture I started, I leveraged a lot on networking. It was a big catalyst for me. So I joined networking organizations. Uh, there was BNI which you would have heard of business yes. networking international there were a few community based networking for me uh, i actually did a lot of my sales there where you know people gave me feedback they started and kind of boosted my confidence also uh, that's where my sales trajectory would you know initiate and then we would build on leads we would build on uh, you know any kind of generation yeah okay but um, so for this paper, it was a little easier for you to sell than your other products. Initially, people were not accepting the color. Few have even said that it's a ganda paper that time. But it, I wouldn't say a lot. I think uh, 8 out of 10 sales pitches have always gone great. So I'm not going to complain. It was, of course, better than any other product. So if you were to look at uh, your product right now, yeah. There is sufficient success right now, yeah. right? Who all are buying your products? So right now, um, we are supplying to good names would be Indian Oil Corporation. We have JP Morgan. We have selling to Wipro, DMART. And we recently signed on with Hero Motor Corp, uh, Munzer Group. And um, Castrol recently onboarded us. IMV, of course, and okay. ISB has also started taking our paper. So these are a few. So was some kind of a snowballing effect that decided to get a yep. marquee customer first yep. and then get others. So who was the first one you tried selling to? First one uh, we had, we did for Astor Hospitals initially. And uh, we did do Wipro uh, was one of our initial corporate clients. So, okay, let me probably like step back a bit. Yeah. And go back to your early days in terms of now you started working with this person yeah. who was extremely happy that yeah. you came along yeah. because his expertise was in manufacturing yeah. and coming up with a product that's yeah. acceptable by the market. But yeah. he didn't like going and putting it out in front of customers. Yeah. That's where you all came in. Yes. Right? So how did you all then convert this product into a market? Ah, uh, So... Yeah, so like I told you, when we first started taking the product, uh, we did go to small steps, right? We During COVID, we tried schools, but schools were closed. We went to corporates, corporates were closed. So we saw the only functioning uh, industry that was, was hospital. hospital. Okay. And we went all out on hospitals. So you would name it, every neighborhood hospital we went, started knocking on doors and we said, we'll give it to you at 5 or 10 rupees lesser. And they start, we started with Columbia Asia then. Then after they converted to Manipal, I haven't been able to crack it. But Columbia Asia started buying. Uh, oh, they were the first to buy. One of the first hospitals to buy from us. And we had a Shanti hospital also. Uh, it gave us a lot of confidence that the paper is being accepted. Right? And so, yeah. what number was Columbia in terms of knocking doors? This was your fifth, fourth, yeah. tenth, thirtieth? What? Somewhere in the top five. What? Somewhere in the top five? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you didn't have to lose confidence. It's the last. <laughs> no, no, no. You don't have this story where you just were giving up and no, no. <laughs> the last door you knocked and that. Again, this happened through uh, BNA, right? So it was a referral uh, connect. So when there's a referral, there's a little more uh, legitimacy med- gets yeah. established. Yeah. Yes. So that's where our selling <laughs> started, and uh, yeah. So you asked how we created that market, rather. With paper, we did start getting more more clients. Then we started different uh, products in the same thing. We started notebooks. We started mm-hmm. journals. And uh, notebooks, we went to schools. And 
schools teach so much about environmental education and children are so aware so in few stalls that we had kept before they used to come and say you know what i want to introduce this in my school i want to go to my principal's cabin and tell her that she has to switch to this kind of uh, paper so you you had ambassadors we had ambassadors and they were so happy to take it so we started creating a market with schools and now we're catering to about 25 schools as wow. of uh, this year and corporates wanted to give different journals swiggy was one of the first ones who what journal uh, we make journals for corporates where they give it as onboard in their onboarding kits okay uh, for them so kids so who are fresh joinees will have to Correct. journal up what their experience Correct. Is, right correct so we used okay. to make these journals and swiggy gave us a very good order they gave us about 20000 journals order uh, as a new year gift they want to give employees and again that created another big market for us in journal segment so but you were re- branding yours all yeah, over say yeah, yeah. rescript yeah, yeah 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 absolutely so did anybody look at it and come to you saying that oh i looked at yep. this gift from uh, yep. swiggy yep would you be able to do something for us uh, i think the case here was better in schools we we uh, uh, what do you say gave our notebooks for schools right so one of the few parents called <laughs> i saw my son's notebook i want to use your paper in my office oh that was a better that, that was also a kind of a good uh, you know where the parents came and asked so, so so tell me how big is this paper market so just notebooks alone would be notebooks i'm saying is 6000 crores and wow. copy of paper would be somewhere in 30 40000 crore wow. it's Staggering a huge number yeah just uh, as per my study research survey 36000 crore reams of paper were used in the you know on an average per year and this is when a large part of india is also not formal yeah exactly so a company like accenture is a startup i mean is a tech company right they use 75000 to 80000 reams per annum just one company so you can did you tell them i did <laughs> we are uh, trying to get them to switch to our paper but i'm saying a software company also uses so much paper <laughs> i think uh, there was an attempt many years ago when i was working in one of these companies that we should attempt to be a paperless organization yeah. right yeah. so therefore you set up a lot of uh, paperless technologies where email yeah. uh, you mail each other presentations correct but then you ended up putting printers and it's so easy for you to print yeah. that you're printing for no reason correct other than to have a copy which we are so used to yeah. now we have devices all over yeah. there is a lesser need for us to print because Absolutely. it is available on a device near you you have ipad app phones computers right but i don't think this paperless organization is just a myth yeah i feel the same way sir honestly uh it's always i'm sure you have to believe in that because that yeah. bucket you're going to send to <laughs> anyway <laughs> right but it's a lot more assuring when you read content on paper right uh we we are being mentored by mr chandas who happens to be our mentor through nsr cells uh, uh, our incubation also so he is the founding ceo of itc classmate right oh. so he mentors us and he told me people used to ask me the same thing in 95 they used to ask me why are you getting starting a new stationery line in itc when everything is going digital and he said look at now <laughs> paper manufacturing has doubled rather people do use a lot of uh, thing final drafts and and a hospital can't function without paper yes. they have to get these reports to be sent to another room maybe a doctor prints out something to go into the scanning room these kind of uh, mid transactional you know it's, it's all by paper right and we recently met with a very large builder uh, divya shri and uh, she was telling me that you know the md has to look at paper drafts in the end he is not going to sign anything unless it is on paper touch feel read well it's the same with me i can't read on uh, <laughs> digital <laughs> digital like yeah. it depends as in if it's a crime novel or some kind of a yeah. travel story i don't mind reading on a yeah. device yeah. but if it is an academic paper or a non fiction related to my work correct i 
prefer a Correct. printed copy because sometimes I can write right. uh, write my thoughts, yeah. put a post-it Correct. note on it. Correct. It is far more um, yeah. comfortable. As in, even from a yeah. uh, mental satisfaction point of yeah. view, that you're holding a object in front of you, Correct. which is paper. Correct. Right. So I've been reading up these new devices that are like paper. Yep, ink and <laughs> ink and yeah. color. I'm looking yeah. at them. They're currently 40,000 not available in India is red. Yeah. <laughs> but I am eyeing those products saying that oh, it looks like paper, you can write on it. Correct. But uh, yeah, that is the final frontier for even the tech, tech products that they need to look Correct. like a paper. Correct. No, they are amazing products, no doubt. In fact, I did a lot of research in e-ink to see if we can release a Rescript e-ink tablet, uh, if it makes sense, right? If you had to catch up with AI and all of that. But uh, I think they're more complementary, sir. Okay. Uh, these tablets are there, they are a little more expensive to use, but paper has its own benefits. Uh, you know, the ease of flipping back and seeing and referring. And yes, these that, kind of that for sure, like going back is yeah. much easier. So now that you said it's a very large market size, yeah. who controls this particular paper industry? Oh, they're big players. We have JK, uh, we have TNPL, ITC. ITC is one of the biggest paper manufacturers. They do ITC boards apart from the stationery supplies. Uh, so they supply to packaging industries and everything. So they're large players. And uh, not nobody should get us wrong. We're not saying uh, our paper is derived from paper made from trees, right? So we're not saying it's, it's just that we're not cutting trees and everything. We, we come here and say, let's use paper more efficiently. So paper can be recycled six, seven times, but doesn't happen so. Oh, is it? Yeah, probably once or twice. So we want to add more layers into recycling. That's so create our, a more circular economy. That's it. That's it. That's our end goal. It's not like we're not going to say, oh, cutting trees is bad and that's for paper. No, we have limited resources. Let's make the most of it. No, no. I I think we have a very wrong notion of forest yeah. as not being, we shouldn't cut forest. Yeah. I think wood is one of the most regenerative yes, yes, yes. Uh, product, right? Yeah. It's unlike, let's say, metal that we are digging out Correct. from earth and we're using it up and there is very little regeneration of it. Forests are regenerative. You, If you plan things out, Correct. you can always have wood, you can always have paper, but you're basically saying that increase the cycle, cycle of for uh, new exactly. wood to come in. Absolutely. Great. So, so where would you want to go? Now that things are going well, there's tailwinds, yeah. <laughs> You're moving quite fast. Um, where would you want to go in the coming years? For the brand, personally, my desire was always to build a consumer brand that is a national uh, brand, something known to people. Uh, you know, they should recognize Rescript as a product. And that is something I'm really working hard, me and my co-founder, in fact, that is our goal. Uh, in, we have set another goal in the environmental to save about 6 crore litres of water by 2025 because our paper consumes less than 50% of a normal uh, paper used. So we have these few goals that we've set on the environmental basis or for the brand. And uh, for me as a personal goal, I don't know, I've always thought I should do something so well that I could be part of the distinguished alumni <laughs> list of IM. <laughs> okay. I think that'll be my biggest reward if it does happen. But that is one goal of mine. <laughs> okay. So, um, but one of the things that uh, is very evident is when you create a new category yes. and there is money to be made in this category, yep. you need to build moats for others yep. Yep. to protect yourself from others coming in, Correct. right? Correct. So, what are the kind of moats that you're building? So, in our case, um, like I said, the way we've created this paper, it is a little hard to, uh, you know, recreate because of the kind of paper that we use. If our you could have done it, somebody else can do, no? No, it does take a lot of trials. It puts a halt on manufacturing. It take, it, it can happen. I'm not saying it, it can't, but it takes a lot of time and resources to do it. So someone who's willing to do that, of course, could enter the market, but End of the day, we are happy, right? It is somehow contributing to the environment, creating a bigger market size. Uh, I don't think there's any fun in being the only company doing the same thing, right? We need to have more people in this. Uh, so how did you raise money for this? So we're bootstrapped. 
so far. Really? Yeah, yeah. We've been bootstrap. We just uh, uh, received a seed fund from NSRC, Startup India Seed Fund, but we have not diluted anything. That's more of a debt uh, funding. So, which you're going to give back <laughs> yeah. oh, very soon. <laughs> yes, okay. But we are bootstrapped. It's, uh, we invested, me and Narayan invested less than 5 lakhs each. Well, that's it. Yeah. And we recovered our money and last year we've clocked 4 crores of turnover. And we're seeing, I think this year we're easily going to project 10 crores of uh, revenue. <laughs> Started with? Less than 10 lakhs. Less than 10 lakhs yeah. and a good contact. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what, and then your ability to knock on doors. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So tell me something about this co-founder thing because uh, in quite a bit of research, yeah. right? Co-founders have, is a very tricky thing. Yeah. And especially if co-founders are friends. Yeah. So there are any number of cases that we have had in the history yeah. where we have seen that co-founding because, hey, I like hanging out with you, so I'm going to be, uh, uh, yeah. uh, it's going to be fun. Yeah. Right. But things don't pan out that way. Yeah. So, have you all had a discussion in terms of who's going to do what, how the rewards are going to be split? Absolutely. So, how do you do that? Absolutely. I think both of us bring uh, good strengths into the organization and uh, fortunately, they're not overlapping. <laughs> so, the conflict comes when you have something that's overlapping in decision making, right? So, my co-founder Nareen, uh, he, his strength lies a lot in administration, financing and uh, you know, operations these things and i do not interfere in any of that and i'm very particular on branding product marketing and sales and this where he doesn't uh, come in so we each have our own strengths that we play it we're very complementary touch wood we're very complementary to each other yes there do come disagreements but we both establish that if there are disagreements or any arguments we both know it's for the best of the company we're not gonna take what he said is wrong or what i said is wrong it's a discussion at the end of the day, and we're very clear about that. But you have had fights that kind of end up saying, get lost, your bugger. <laughs> no, sir. Not yet. <laughs> Fortunately, not to that extent. <laughs> yeah, because you tend to be also very easy with your very close friend. Correct, correct. That you yeah. throw your words around. Yeah, we have that rapper, of course. Yeah. But I don't think it's gotten to the seriousness of saying, you know, I'm yeah, done. Yeah. Man. <laughs> okay, so, so what's common across both of you? Because what people tend to look at when you're looking at co-founders is that this complementarity in your yeah. capability. Yeah. But for you not to get to say get loss, yeah. there has to be certain commonality. Yeah. Right? So what is common across both of you all? So I, I honestly think it's that we both look out for each other a lot. I honestly look out for him a lot. Uh, anyone, anything says that Narain, this, 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 I will not allow that. And it's the same for him. So I think the interest of protecting each other in business or if not business as a friendship has gotten a good essence in No, in, know, in yeah. so what is it that you like about him and he likes about you, which right. which kind of holds both of you all together? I think I respect a lot the few things that he can do, I, I can't do. So it may be from rec uh, recovering our uh, uh, receivables. payments, receivables. He's very uh, thing on that. He's so adamant on making sure we get money, even if it is DMART or if it is anyone, if they're not paying, he would go to the CEO's office. He did that for one big organization. I don't want to name them. Very big organization. They were not paying. He went to their cabin. And for me, it was like, we'll lose the client. Don't do it. Don't do it, you know. <laughs> but I gave him that space. I understood. I respected his thoughts on, you know, you can take that call. So it's a similar for me, a lot of branding decisions or any product decisions, which he may not like, he will let go. But you all are doing this without a discussion, right? Did yeah. you all discuss saying that? Yeah, we keep each other informed. No, I mean to say that here is what you're going to be taking decisions. Yeah. Here yeah. is what. So who's the CEO? He's the CEO. Oh, he's the CEO. <laughs> he's the CEO. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You have. I you have. No, I don't role. want that role. <laughs> okay. Why not? I'm more interested in building the brand. Like maybe when you're like. 3 crores, 5 crores, that role doesn't matter. What if we're like 500 crores and he's getting all the limelight, he's getting all the <laughs> pictures being taken, flashed on, nice big. 
<laughs> magazines and you are working around, you're the one who's making money. Do you think at that point of time there's going to be a conflict? No, no, I think I voluntarily, willingly would say you be the CEO, be the uh, front runner and I would <laughs> sit back. Maybe. So, so you all have taken decisions where you say that you take a call. Yeah. So what are the decisions that he lets you take a call saying that, okay, I'm going to believe what you say. Right. If anything comes to um, customer relations, product, just making the product or anything in uh, the printing side, the manufacturing side of that, those part. And even in a lot of sales, uh, if there are a few uh, negotiations where, you know, it's quite crucial, I do take calls there as well. And uh, of course, his own clients, he does the same and I do the same. So we, we've we had that, I think it's not structured or specific, but we have that uh, understanding to know that that's yours. But have you seen any other uh, co-founder team not do well that you thought would I do have, well? Absolutely. Okay. I have, I have. And I've seen them struggle. I've seen people not work, come out of it. Uh, <laughs> but I've seen successful ones also. Yeah. It's been so do you all talk in the sense these are the game plans or you let everything come organically or you have a game plan? No, we do have a game plan. We kind of review what we did last month, the previous month and how to go about next. We do come up with... So, how do you hire people? Oh, you are a startup, like nobody wants to join a startup. You're not a tech product. Correct. He gets a good product, a nice product, but this is not going to get them to AI, ML and some yeah. of these things that they would like to get to. Correct. How do you hire people? A lot of people who want to work with us, in fact, uh, come from creative spaces. You won't believe uh -huh. our social media head is a lawyer. He studied law. He Why joined he us it? when he was doing law. And he stuck with us after he finished graduation. And he is doing everything he's with us even to date. Why is he doing it in the sense? He, he didn't like being a lawyer. I don't know, but I thought he. I think he thought this was more interesting and had a better. And there's a lot of scope for creativity, which uh, he loved. Uh, we do have other uh, people working. With I them. guess a lot of creative people get extremely energized when they look at paper, right? Absolutely, stationery <laughs> brings in a lot of. Right. Yeah, right. Right. I've been to the stores in Japan where there are like five or six stories yep. of Muji and you know, all that. Yeah, yep. stores which have. Uh, Tons and tons of paper. Absolutely. Right. So, coming back to your co founder thing, you all have decided these are the things that you're going to be good at, those are the things that he's going to be good at. Yes. And that's continuing. Yes. yes okay. Um, there's a question that I wanted to ask you that I seem to have forgotten in uh, the interim. Um, okay. In what way has being at NSRCL been of advantage to you? A lot, sir. I really think the growth which we had this year, I have to give a lot to NSRCL. Uh, to give you an insight, like the previous financial year, we did 1.5 crores in revenue. And this year, we've done uh, 4 CR. Uh, a lot has been because one of the, the funds that we received, the seed fund, of course, did help us with more inventory and pushing out the product uh, more. Uh, then our mentor, Mr. Chandas, who being in the same industry, who's built the biggest brand classmate in India for stationaries, is showing us this route on how do you tackle this industry. When it came to school season, he guided us so well on, you know, when you had to start paper, for which region you had to start printing ready. And these insights helped us a lot. So apart from that, even when I was part of Velocity, the sessions that we've had, the network that we've built, all of this was of great benefit to... Uh, well, how did you find NSR cell? Uh, I was part of... Uh, oh, YLP. YLP. Right, right. Yeah. But apart from that, uh, I think uh, a previous cohort member referred as he was into corporate gifting. And uh, we were giving our products. So he referred saying, you know, join uh, well of the team. Who would not want to be incubated in NSR cell? <laughs> so I took the first chance. Well, nice to know. <laughs> there are a lot who don't want to be in this part of... The world, Baner got uh, trans, uh, get, getting through all this metro. So, let me go back to your YLP. Yeah. Right. That's been of interest because I'm kind of interested in online yeah. education. Yeah. Um, that was an experiment that we did. Yeah. So, what was good about it? YLP, I think, brought in a lot of focus in me. I didn't know what to do after Express V stuff. So, period. YLP was it synchronous uh, classroom, live classroom, or we recorded? Had, we had both. So you all had both. We had both. We had modules online. We had modules offline. 
No, not offline. I meant to say when you're looking at the video, was the video a live classroom or was it recorded? No, there were both in that also. Okay. We had both. We had pre-recorded, we had live uh, classroom sessions also. And what part of the program was pre-recorded? Large part of it was pre-recorded? A large. The IMBX part yes. largely is the pre-recorded content that we used to consume. But in between, we did have uh, live uh, classes. We also had uh, in-campus uh, classes and they were the best ones. In class? In class, yeah. No, but that's not what I want to hear. Yeah. Uh, what I really want to hear is how yeah. do you make online better because I think that's the future or at least something that we are yeah. attempting to do yeah. is how do you make offline more attractive? How do you make offline more attractive? Yes. So which part of offline was like interesting for you in terms of your value saying that, oh, I didn't know this. So I think offline for me is still the better... Uh, but not offline, sorry, online. Online, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Online was, it did get interesting. So uh, I was a person who used to take these courses in edX just to, uh, you know, stay in touch with some new course, uh, build your knowledge, right? And uh, that's where uh, I was introduced to the IMBX also. And uh, it, it was good for me because the teaching modules, it had a lot of interactive sessions after that, like after class, right? It could be question and answer, it could be discussion points. Um, and we had built our own, uh, through YLP, we had our own class network. network. So we. But that was across the country. No, it was only for. No, yeah, yeah, so yeah. YLP yeah. participants were across the country. Correct. Correct. So you all were interacting. Yep, absolutely. Uh, digitally. Digitally as well. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So let me put you on the spot. Yeah. And say, which part of the online yeah. course that you did that you still remember that I remember this lesson? I remember this lesson. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, we had one lesson for, uh, it was not an elaborated case, but with uh, strategic uh, management about uh, Southwest Airlines. Uh, that was something was quite... Reji was doing that. Yeah. It? Yeah. <laughs> okay. But that was synchronous, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. It was a mix of both. So. Okay. But yeah, you did put me on the spot. <laughs> so right. we just had, we just told Reji, Reji, don't do Southwest anymore for some of those other things saying that, look, people are complaining it's such an old right. case. Yes, I but probably I tell him that of the entire course, yeah. you remember yeah. his case. Yep. So maybe he'll have some emanation to go back to people who are saying change the case. <laughs> yeah, I, I I really hope he does. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. So great. Nice yeah. talking to you. All the best. Thank and you. hope to see you uh, succeed more. And I really wish uh, for a paper product from India <laughs> to be a desired product in Japan. I think that will be Ooh. your yep. that will yep. be yep. your absolute ultimate glory. Yeah in terms of the Japanese folks wanting Absolutely. right so wishing you lots of luck thank you so and much. seeing you around thank you yeah. so much yeah. <laughs>